fiddle probably first arrived in Sweden in the 17th century from France, brought by musicians hired for the court of Queen Christina. It soon filtered down to the rural population, becoming established as the primary instrument for dance music. The oldest Swedish tunes from medieval times show a close relationship to the music of the saliaflut or willow flute and the sackpeeper or bagpipe, and to herding calls and simple songs. These tunes tend to be harmonically very simplistic and are built from very short formulaic phrases. Such tunes were easily adapted for the fiddle. However, the pre-classical baroque feel and structure of the music first played in the court remain a feature of much of the subsequent Swedish repertoire. Grace and elegance are adjectives which are more relevant to Swedish fiddling than to many other styles. Linear structures and relatively complex melodic lines are a feature of many of the later tunes, with development of themes, a wider range of pitch and clearly defined harmony with arpeggios. The polska is by far the most important group of tunes in Swedish fiddling. Another significant group of tunes arrived in the 19th century, largely imported from other parts of Europe. These included the waltz, polka, mazurka, hambo and shotis. These were relatively simple, accessible tunes, and with them came modern instrumentation, eventually including brass and the accordion. These instruments, and the general nature of the tunes, had the effect of ironing out many of the peculiarities of rhythm and intonation, which had been an important part of Swedish music. In common with many other European countries, the first serious interest by the intelligentsia in folk music in Sweden began with the concept of romantic nationalism in the early 19th century. A search began for music that could represent the soul of the nation, and the newly formed Gothic society, or Gotiska Forbundet, began collecting and publishing the oldest Swedish fiddle tunes they could find. The turn of the century saw the first serious promotion of live public performance by Spelman or folk players, the first Spelman contest, and the first national gathering of Spelman. Tune collection culminated in the publication between 1922 and 1939 of Svenska Lata, Swedish tunes, with 8,000 songs and tunes from around the country. Even this collection was not complete and several regions in the north were left out when the collectors ran out of time. One of the first fiddlers to achieve national fame was Hurt Anders Olsen, 1865 to 1952. He came to the attention of the tune collector Niels Andersen, who recorded and transcribed many of the tunes from Olsen's repertoire, particularly those from the, his home village of Bingsio. He was invited to compete in one of the first national fiddlers' contests in 1908 and won the first prize, after which he toured several times, often with other fiddle players. He left many recordings and a wealth of his own compositions, including Twelfth March. The ubiquitous tune Gardaby Larton may also have been his. In 1937, the first Spelmannslag was formed, an amateur group of mostly fiddlers who got together regularly to practice and perform. Many of the players were from a classical background. The idea was so popular that similar groups rapidly sprang up across the country. The majority of the music of these groups is unison fiddles, although some harmony is also added, and in recent years other instruments such as guitars, accordions, double basses and drums can also be included. The spread of the Spelmannslag coincided with a general move away from solo fiddling, which had been the norm, towards widespread harmony twin fiddling. Playing harmony fiddle is known as terstamma secundiering. This can be simple harmonies a third above or below, or a more complex line involving double stops with short lines joining the chords. Twin fiddling grew in part out of the tradition of some professional fiddlers having a child apprentice who would play harmonies along with the master. At weddings, two fiddlers playing on horseback would sometimes announce the arrival of the bride and groom. Fiddling whilst walking also happens, especially when a fiddler leads people to the church for a wedding, or on the occasion of midsummer festivals when an audience has to be moved from one location to another. This can happen even with massed fiddles in Spelmannslag. The green wave of the 60s and 70s brought a further widespread interest in regional and local culture, and the end of the 20th century saw further consolidation of the fiddle revival. Young, musically literate players like Mats Eden persuaded the music education establishment that folk fiddling was as rich and complex in its own way as classical art music and equally worthy of funding, research and concert hall performance. This depended in large part on sophisticated and apparently accurate transcription of the richly ornamented playing style of traditional fiddlers, something that had previously been an entirely oral tradition. Mats Eden's playing is rooted in the folk tradition of Värmland in western Sweden, he has been a rich spellman or national folk musician since 1979. He is a professor and is a member of the Swedish Royal Academy of Music. 
He's also a member of the band Grouper, as well as being involved with many other writing, performance and recording projects. <laughs> Swedish fiddle ornamentation. Swedish fiddling is rich in grace notes, rolls and trills, double string unisons and drones, and notes raised or lowered by microtones. The word drill or trill is used as a general term to describe all of these. Description of Swedish fiddle ornamentation is made difficult by the fact that different fiddlers in different regions use different names and different approaches. How to decorate a melody is often down to personal choice. To quote the fiddler Mia Marin, the vocabulary around ornaments is also very confusing. If you just search on YouTube, you will hear very prominent musicians saying totally different things about what the ornaments are called and how they are played. One of the most common ornaments is the forschlag or before hit, similar to the hammer-on or pull-off seen in both Irish and American fiddling. Where there are two adjacent notes of a different pitch, the first note is repeated as a short grace note tied to the next note. The leading or grace note may also be unrelated to the previous note. A first finger melody note may be preceded by an open string grace note, a second finger melody note by a first finger grace note, and so on. Also very common is the lower mordant, where a melody note is very briefly interrupted by a slight flick of the next note down in the scale, or a note a semitone below. Rolls in Swedish music are not unlike those in Irish music. I am assured by Mia Marin that these are referred to as pretzels, Trills, which are a very characteristic feature in Sweden, are never heard in Ireland. They can be either upper or lower trills, depending on whether the melody note is the lower or upper. The trill can be with two beats or notes, or three or more, and the grace note can be either above or below the melody note. The direction of these trills is largely a matter of personal expression. The wider the musical interval between melody and grace note in a trill, the greater its expressive effect. The trill may also accelerate towards the end of the note. The fourth string open string unison is common to both Sweden and Scotland and Swedes often use this on a longer note to rock backwards and forwards between strings adding a rhythmic pulse within the length of the note. This pulse can also be accentuated with a break note, a single flick of an upper note not unlike the cut in Irish music. The second half of the pulse, halfway through a long bow, may be marked by a sudden increase in bow speed similar to the updriven bow in Scottish Strathspey fiddling. The Swedes also make great use of ringing strings, which are also a feature of Shetland fiddling. This can involve either single open strings or extended open string drones. Keys which allow extensive use of open strings are preferred, mainly G, D and A. Like in Norway, Swedish fiddlers often use the natural or untempered scale. This means that some notes are played slightly sharp or flat to what you would expect, for example from a conventionally tuned piano. This relates partly to the extensive use of open strings, to the historical links to sounds such as the willow bark flute and to the early tradition of fiddle as a solo instrument. As an example, the normally flattened seventh note of the minor scale is often played slightly sharp, especially if it is leading up to the tonic. Sometimes the tuning will be different going up and coming down. The beauty and subtlety of the natural scale is lost with large ensembles, particularly where tempered instruments such as the accordion are involved. Fortunately, fiddlers greatly value these special notes and they are unlikely to disappear. The Polska One of the greatest challenges for outsiders when trying to understand Swedish music is the rhythm of the Polska. This is a dance known in Sweden since the end of the 15th century and it has remained popular up to the present day. Written conventionally in 3-4 time, they can appear on sheet music perfectly straightforward. However, there are different forms of polska all around the country. With triplet polskas, each note can be divided into three, while 16th note polskas have each beat split four ways. While some have three equal beats, even polskas or yam polskas, others are uneven, uyam, and have a second beat which is movable. Swedish fiddler Karen Myers explained to me, Examples of very asymmetric styles are Boda Polska, Orsa Polska, Sodrab Dalana Polska. This is one of the reasons that the typical fiddler foot taps for Polskas on the first and third beats, since the second beat can be all over the landscape, depending. Moving the timing of that second beat is an expressive opportunity for the musician, very similar to pressing the leading notes in a melody up or down. The second beat is often the one where dancers lift their feet, for example on the Budan Polska. 
Depending on how the dancers move, the fiddler may delay this second beat to stay in time with the dancer's feet. A similar thing is sometimes seen in English Morris dancing. With some polskas, the rhythm works in two bar patterns, with the first bar being asymmetrical, the second more even. There are thousands of polskas in Sweden, and each region has its own repertoire and style. Many tunes are traditional, but, as in Norway, are named after a particular fiddler who made a particular version popular. For others, the composer is known. Mia Marin suggested to me that polskas are in fact overrepresented in the repertoire, having been widely collected in the past at the expense of other tune types, not because they were widely played, but because they were seen as the oldest and therefore purest type of Swedish tune. The Nickel Harper Sweden has its own unique fiddle in the Nickel Harper. This has tangents acting like frets, which can be raised or lowered with keys instead of fingering the notes directly onto the fingerboard. In the modern chromatic version of the instrument, there are three melody strings, one drone string and twelve sympathetic strings. The instrument has a three octave range. Held like a guitar, a short bow is wielded with the right hand, whilst the left hand operates the keys. Though with a history going back almost 600 years, the nickel harper had almost died out by the 20th century. There were just 14 players left in the 1960s, but it was revived largely due to the efforts of Eric Sahlstrom, 1912-86. to One of the best-known players today is Olaf Johansson, who plays solo and with the group Varsen. Another interesting fiddle variant in Sweden is the Traskofiol, or wooden shoe fiddle. Found mainly in the south of Sweden, this is a budget fiddle whose body is constructed from a used wooden clog. Though rather quiet and often tuned low, they are perfectly playable fiddles. If you want to learn to play Swedish fiddle properly, I suggest you try Mia Marin's Fiddle Academy. And for a huge online collection of tunes, try folk.wiki.se. The Swedish fiddle tradition is surely one of the richest and most challenging, and yet by comparison with the music of Ireland, for example, is scarcely on the radar outside of Scandinavia. It deserves to be better known. <laughs>